Greetings, Cybers! It's Kuro back with the Reverse 1999. We last left off, we finally finished off Act 4 of the main story. Welcome to Typhon's Movie Party! Hello, Sotheby. We finally finished off Act 4, El Oro de la Tigres. At any time it's pronounced, I don't know. And boy, was this a long one. I think it was longer than all the other... Yes, it was. It was longer than all the other, uh... Yeah, it's longer than all the past three acts. By, like, a few... By, like, uh... A good about five or four or five, probably six chapters. And, boy, it was long. But they managed to get what they wanted in the end. Virgin's finally awake. And now they can include Arcanist. Any Arcanist Virgin takes in... They can work independently with the Foundation without having been go to the, uh, those behavioral classes and everything. But today, we're going to get into this new event that's, uh, popped up, and let me... Actually, no, I had something to check. Never mind. I have not touched this at all. I wanted to wait until I had oh, time. Just in time. Is this yours? I keep forgetting they have these it's cinematics and everything when they have new events up. This shine? Only few tourists are willing to... <clears throat> Only the locals know. They have something to do with that comet myth I heard about. Some mythologies are the original translation of the realm. Are they in Egypt now? That's how we located the star. Or something akin to it? reaches level 5 on Torino scale. Shower. So many of them, as the news mentioned. This deeper festival will become a disaster. Oh. It's all because of my sister, who I've only seen once in my life. It's also my tutor. Return of Mr. Josh, why, how you find this place? <laughs> my dear children, enjoy your deeper festival. Shower. It's coming. I'll smash that door open, even if it takes the other arm of mine. Not yet, best spot. Stop the falling stone. When did you last look up at the sky? That's not how you look at the star, and you shouldn't lower your head. I said, mobile games make some cinematics for like this good for no dang reason. I mean, look at Genshin and Honkai Star World. They make cinematics like nobody's business. Let's see. Ah, uh, here's the this the event story. I think we're supposed to be following the story with uh, Matilda, with a whole new who's wearing a whole new outfit. I think a dream made of swords and reality. Its edges are jagged and treacherous. Jenny to more punk. Part one, the Stargazers. Hypotheses have been made regarding the quasars as follows. The hall was packed with audience members. <sighs> the doctor for the podium is boiling. The eyes with the questions and inspection. Some behind glasses are cast out of the darkness. Just like the signals beamed from several light years away and received at the top of the observatory. Good. Based on the data of its redshift, Dr. Schmidt deducted that it is moving away from us at a recessional velocity of one sixth of light speed. Page three. Mm. I did put it in. In most cases, we would consider a stellar black hole as what is left from the gravitational collapse of a star. The red chalk left a jaggy, jaggy circle in one stroke on the blackboard. They fight, attract each other, and merge into a supermassive black hole to which the stars in the nearby galaxies will be eventually pulled by gravity... Page three. Oh, here it is. 
Did Kumar put it here for me? Then there was neither existence nor non-existence. There was neither the realm of space nor the sky beyond. Then there was neither death nor immortality. There was neither day nor night. Inside the quasars, there is a violent activity occurring that is close to a supernova. Is this supposed to be a math class or...? It devours stars. Or I guess it might be close to more of an astrology class. Do they have astrology classes in college? I, I can't remember. Ugh, it's gonna be wrecking my brain around trying to figure that out. And the gas cloud turns into stars out of gravitational driving. Thus, a new star is born. It is a graveyard filled with corpses, as well as a cradle for new stars. Hmm. I feel like it's gonna play into something later, as this was I was able to I be able to remember all that. The evening breeze, the meadow, and the fresh air. Despite its lack of privacy, this was a good place to chill as it should be. It was a clear night. Stars twinkled in the sky like golden sprinkles on a dark cloth. That was a successful lecture, Kalabauna. Kalabauna heard a familiar voice and recognized the footsteps. Without looking back, she already knew who was behind her. Thanks for your rare compliment. She extended her arm, reaching out for the stars. I can't believe the first thing you do after the long absence is listening to my embarrassing speech. You see, this is not my thing. I'm still struggling with a word I should use in part three. Oh, but you know I won't pass up a good chance to sit in the audience. The grass rustled. She lay down next to Calabana. To be someone Brana. who can smile knowingly at the argument made by the lecturer, knowing full well the thinking process behind, while staying close to other whispering opinions. This is the perfect spot for observations, like a perfect observatory from which we witness the events in the universe. I'd rather not give a comment on your personal taste. Kumar, I think we should make some adjustments to the details of the following observation. Here's an idea. How about we put away the work for the moment? Forget those things. Just look at the stars. Simply fix your eyes on them. Uh, move over. The grass beneath me feels like pine needles. <laughs> Yeah, it's a nice laying on when grass, we isn't away, exactly fun. Danny from the institution had paid a visit here. Based on his attitude, I may tell he was doubting my identity as a human. <sighs> if it goes on like this, we are likely to be kicked out of our own project. I've destroyed all the observation data of that special celestial body. At least through this, we can keep the observation method between you and me. Hmm. So are they Arcanus? Her words were only met with lasting silence. Calabrana turned to the person next to her. You seem... Have I done anything wrong? No. As a research student, you did an excellent job. Though no more than I'd expect from a student of mine. Her voice was incredibly calm. That's just what we've been doing, isn't it? Hiding in the corners? Doing research that completely has nothing to do with others. You know what? I'm a bit tired. Seriously. Tired of the pointless power struggles between these specks of stardust. We all know none of us could avoid the fate of being restored to the basic elements of the universe after we die. Mm. She sighed deeply at the thought. Never mind. It's not the first time it's happened. <laughs> I've never been welcomed on either side. Ah, uh, speaking of which. Hooked by the conversation, unpleasant memories swam, swam up again. My parents. Yeah, I told you about them. They abandoned me because I had little so-called talent for Arcanum. And now they are showing remorse for what they have done. <laughs> There's more. My stupid younger brother knew nothing about what happened to me. He didn't even recognize me. His own sister. Wow. You paid them a visit this time back in your hometown? Visit them? No, sweetheart. I went home to... 
to do many things except to hear some old people's apology. I've never cared about those things. I went there to deal with a little business, and it was done smoothly. I'm curious as to what this business was. <laughs> they seem to be in a state of ease. So smoothly that I have taken care of everything there is to be done. Hmm? Calabona, if... The guest of wind blew by the meadow. The subtle sound of plant fibers webbing against each other could be heard clearly. If one day we can see that celestial body with our own eyes, or even touch it with our own hands, I will definitely... Kamar. Hmm? What are you talking about? Calabrana propped herself up on both of her elbows, trying to see the one beside her clearly. But that person's face was indistinguishable, as if hidden in a thick black fog. Come on! Oh, shit. <sighs> oh, that was abrupt. Let's see if he continued. Well, that was abrupt. Wonder what happened there. To the left, to the right, an arc and a fleeting gaze. Part 2 Yellow Crystal Pendulum. Matilda. The crowds on the platform are like schools of colorful sardines, pushing each other toward their destinations at incredible speed. Oh, enfin. Ah, aïe. Ce trajet en train m'a vraiment fait mal au cou. Right, I keep forgetting she has a habit of speaking her native tongue when she's not around anyone that needs to understand her. She finally gets to relax in one of the few empty seats in the station. Comment ce serait bien si je pouvais dormir dans mon lit par un temps aussi frais et agréable Ou alors autant rester à des lits avec maman pour vendre ses topaz Her fist tightens, though she doesn't con consciously want to. The documents rattle in her hand. She looks down at the documents. La prochaine fois. En ce moment, l'énergie céleste semble être parfaitement forte, et la meilleure zone d'observation se trouve être proche de Delhi. Quelle occasion providentielle pour ce génie de la divination Ce serait de la folie ne rien faire. <rire> Attends voir. Quand j'ai trouvé le bon endroit pour méditer. C'est slightly six or first. It seems she has made up her mind very seriously. <laughs> Tant ou tard, je remonterai jusqu'au sommet. Because he's out here for her divination hobby. Interesting. She remembers to do the documents and moves close enough to read the poorly printed text. Hmm. Voyons voir de quoi il est question sur cette affiche. Hmm. Deepa Festival. She turns over the poster. People in Mopang hold the Deepa Festival during the Mission Shang period every year to seek the blessings of. Oh, alors c'est en fonction de la pluie de météorites ici. Vendre. Hmm. Je crois que j'ai lu ce nom dans les documents. Thank goodness we have subtitles. <laughs> Je suis à l'est de Chandigarh en ce moment. Ah, Pourrait-il y avoir moins de signes ici ah, ah, Cette carte est en anglais de l'autre côté. Très bien. Ah, ce serait encore mieux et plus clair si c'était en français. L'endroit que j'ai trouvé grâce à la divination s'appelle... Mort... Ah, C'est un temple Je dois me rendre dans sa... Grotte au nord Bon, un temple. Cela peut être un rapport avec le mythe de la comète que j'ai lu avant. N'est-ce 
Ah aussi, l'un des endroits où l'on peut voir la prochaine pluie de météorites Super C'est là que je vais alors Où est mon stylo ah, Là Très bien, notons-le He hands us over and writes down something carefully. Ouf, bien joué. Tout est beaucoup plus pratique dans la nouvelle ville. The ceiling looks new. This train, sta this train station seems to have been built not too long ago. Oh, c'est beaucoup mieux que le plafond de la gare de Delhi. Oh, je me demande comment vont Mama et Papa maintenant. C'est un diable pas vraiment vite quand il négocie. Ah. As he slackens off, tiredness catches up with her. Ah. Mm. Juste une petite sieste rapide. Mm. C'est vrai. You decide to do this at a train station? Oh. That was her first mistake, Matilda. <laughs> That's why you never take a nap in a foreign air country. Especially in a foreign place. The train station pe hi so rahi hai. Are, mujhe kuch nahi dekh raha hai, boss. Aapki tarah har kisi ki nazar itni achhi nahi hoti. Oh, dhanya baad. चमत्कार गहने और बटुआ लेकिन इतनी गहरी नींद में भी वो कौन सी चीज है जो इतने कसकर पकड़ी है ये तो वो नक्शा है जो रेलवे स्टेशन पर मुफ्त में देते हैं हां कोई कीमती चीज शायद जैसे खजाने का नक्शा होता है किताबों में अगर गरीब जा सको Again, very glad they have subtitles here. रहने दो, तुम्हारे लिए बहुत मुश्किल होगा। अजय, तुम बाएं से जाओ, कागज को वैसे ही लेना जैसे मैंने सिखाया, और मिल जाए तो मुझे ये इशारा करके बताना। कोई बात नहीं। ख्यान से छोटे, ये तुम्हारा पहला कदम होगा हमारे इस काम में। ओ, मिस्टर चाको कभी मत बताना कि मैंने तुम्हें ये काम सिखाया था। चाओ, चाओ। तुमसे पहले कोई और ना जाके ले ले। कैसे कैसे? कितने शोस की से बैलेंस? Sleepily, Matilda struggles to open her eyes and sees a little figure prowling away. Um, <clears throat> is this yours, miss? Hmm? Hey, that's the pendulum mom gave me. Who are you? It fell on the floor. I was just picking it up for you. There, don't lose it again. Thank you. So that we just put pendulum. No, uh. -uh. It's yet too early to say thanks, girl. Hmm? They find themselves in the shadow of a tall man with a, quite a peculiar yet cool looking arm. Wow. The man seems trouble worn, but he's carrying just little luggage. About three minutes ago, or five minutes ago, this fellow was wandering around you like a sneaky fair badger. Trust me, this is no friendly encounter. He raises his left hand, more specifically, his prosthesis, to show the delicate wallet between those seemingly stiff fingers. Um, that's mine! You! You stole my wallet! What? What? I've put it in my pocket. Someone needs to work on his techniques. Right, boy? Especially just outright admitting it like that. <laughs> The man catches the jar's clothes, this time with his wheel hand, and easily picks him up. A jar is lifted in the air, but he isn't strangled with his collar, but the man has skillfully avoided the area of his neck. Go! 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 
अपना खुद का काम करो अनफॉर्चुनेट फॉर यू माई बिजनेस दीज डेज इज टू माइंड अदर्स बिजनेस सीम्स लाइक देर आर मोर थिंग्स इन दैट पॉकेट ऑफ योर्स कम ऑन यू नो वेर वी आर गोइंग Just shows his teeth and bites the man hard on the right hand, which is dragging his collar. <sighs> Damn, that's good, isn't it? Let's go because for pain. A little deep breaks free and quickly slips into the crowd. He's got in a way. My, my, my pendulum. He had my pendulum. Stop! No! Well, here we go. Beast types, eh? They all need mineral. We already have some netto in here, so we just need two more others. So of course, will be eternity and bloom party, and for the fourth, we'll have to be Miss Moison, who I still need to level up some more. I really need to get a fourth uh, five-star or six-star mineral character here. Oh boy. Hey, slow down. You'll get yourself hurt. Why is he running circles? Let me see. Ha! Ah, good for you, clever boy. Planned this route beforehand, didn't you? So, to the left. <laughs> he certainly he certainly knows his way around things. Got a plan. Actually. I do it first. So that's your idea. Take it easy. I know the man. And this is an alien city. Oh, break it! Break it! Flying handbag for only three thousand perpetanti. And done. Oh, my bad. Please let go me. <laughs> you should have seen this coming. Now give me. You fish. Hey, you bad, bad kid. Yeah, because it would be too easy. A sword shot. Would you buy me a drink? I believe in you. I know the man, and this That's is an alien rough. city. Try for free. Try for free. And KO. I'm exhausted. You are still have to die. Matilda is very driven. I guess you could say. <laughs> behind Still puffed up so no point in doing it a second time Then again Bloody prom Handle it gently The ocean dried and I'm alone again <laughs> <sighs> Wow you sure know how to run boy But that's enough. <laughs> Give it back to the girl, okay? Where well, I get the feeling he just passed it off to someone in the midst of all that running. Besides, the police station is not as bad as you think. No, I will never ever go there. Pride goes before the fall. I've been there. You better take it. That lady followed us deep past the head. Stop right there, you little thief! Mm. The annoyed boy throws the pendulum into the distance with full strength. Ah, uh, hey, you boy, wait! Man runs into the colorful schools of sardines in hot pursuit. You, no, it's fragile, don't! In a beautiful arc, the transparent topaz falls toward the ground like a meteor. <gasps> Suddenly, a palm appears and catches it safely. Just in time. Nice catch, Kala. Is this yours? Ah, uh, yes. The lady leans forward and speaks in a soft voice. Matilda stares into her eyes, completely abstracted. Put it away, kid. As she tilts her palm, the topaz falls swiftly into Matilda's hand. Ah, uh, thank you. It's okay. The lady slightly nods and leaves like a gust of wind. Elle est partie si vite. Ah, les documents. Bon, j'espère que je ne les ai pas abîmés lors de la poursuite. 
une, deux, hmm Il manque deux pages Où sont-elles passées A small black-haired black head is peeking from behind a pillar nearby. शकर है कि मैंने अपने भागने की योजना पहले से ही बना ली है और अजर से तेज कोई नहीं दौड़ता ध्यान से भाग जाओ बेचारा अजर मैं उस लड़की से लाभ कमाऊंगी और उसमें भी जिसमें तुम कामयाब नहीं हुए तो वो सुनहरे बालों वाली एक आसान लक्ष्य है तुम देखोगे कि कैसे कंजीरा अरे ये मैंने किस चीज पर पैर रख दिया क्या वो इस चीज को ढूंढ रही थी हाँ मेरी आंखें मुझे धोखा नहीं देंगी hmm. ये तो सचमुच किसी खजाने का नक्शा है देखो उसने एक तारा भी बनाया है बिल्कुल किताबों की तस्वीरों जैसी शाली हो तुम कजीरा ये तो कमाल हो गया हम्म, मुझे देखने दो और मुझे नोट्स के साथ पढ़ना होगा ये क्या है हम्म, उसने सारे शब्द गलत लिखे हैं यहाँ तक कि बिंदु और मात्रा शब्दों के ऊपर Don't even buzz out trying. It's in French. Ha. Oi, mere khazane ke bare mein sochna bhi mat. Oh. It's at the squints to scan the suspect who is trying to avoid her eye contact. What were you muttering about with my map? Um. <laughs> I uh just pick it up and look for it sooner. Hope I can help. Mm-hmm. Help? Hmm. Matilda needs no one's help. Not to mention from a girl who just showed up out of nowhere. Hey! Don't, don't, don't touch me. Times you ignores Matilda's contempt. She holds Matilda's arms intimately, with a big smile on her face. Wow, you are so cool. Is this your first time in the village? On your own? What's the plan? Sightseeing, family visit, or looking for some? Hey, let go first. Why is that any of your business? Um, <laughs> I mean, perhaps not clear to you, but in fact, I am a guide who always give best service. A guide who always gives the best service? A tour guide, maybe? Anyways, I tell you, nobody knows this village better than I. Hey, don't stare at me like this. I'm wandering here for a reason. I only give services to outstanding and cool people. They have good taste. That's why I find you at the station from all travelers. My most great, great customer ever. Let me tell you, I know you can be a bit jaded sometimes, but come on, even you can see through that. Ah, the outstanding and impressive people, you say. Hmm. At least you have sharp eyes. Matilda tries hard to suppress her complacent smile. See, the place you was visiting is different from others. This shrine, only few tourists are willing to. <laughs> only the locals know, and now people can only go into three caves out of four. But if you choose I. Black Earth Earth girl reaches out and pats the map on the star. I can take you go North Cave, even if it's not open. Matilda frowns in response. There is suspicion in her eyes, as there should be. How are you going to take me there? How? How I do that? Um, my local connections, of course. I see. No wonder there were some discrepancies between the documents and the tourist brochure. Uh, um, well, of course, I knew this all along. Sure you did. <laughs> hmm? What are you laughing at? No, 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 my dear guest. It's just sneeze. Well, you see, I just make a living here 
I'm short and thin. Can't compare with adults. Come on, Matilda. You're smarter than this. She tilts her head slightly. The angle is so perfect that it seems to be the result of countless practices. And sheds tears naturally. And you is so great. You will not let I, big, poor kid, get hungry for no money. Will you? Uh, even if you look at me with those puffy eyes. First sight I know, you are the lady with great taste. Just like a sand cat. Brave and smart. Kangira's downcast green eyes suddenly steal a covert glance at Matilda, secretly reading the signs on her face. Sand... Sand cat. It does sound like a smart animal. And she's falling for it. Anyways, you is lucky to meet me, my lady. Kaiser waves her hands as if she has made a big decision. Well, well. For a great customer like you, I can only suffer some loss. Just 200 rupees and I'll show you the shrine and the whole Moorpunk village. With a special Deepa festival tour on the house. Want me to recommend a hotel? I know good hotels too. <laughs> yes or no, my dear guest? My most great guest? Please? I will allow you to be my temporary assistant, for your life has been so sad already. <laughs> Yay! Let's go treasure hunting! Um, sightseeing! You really get so caught there. Excellent! Have you arranged a shuttle bus for the travel? <laughs> I have something gooder than bus for you. Ranger puts on a mysterious smile on her strained face. And I promise you, quick like flash. Mm -hmm. To be continued. Honestly, Matilda, you're supposed to be the smart one around here, remember? A small squad, revving engines, and a gloomy cave make for a story that never goes out of fashion. Part 3. The Young Indiana Jones I'll be honest, I've never watched the Indiana Jones movie. I know of Indy, but I never actually watched any of it. <laughs> Stalker, I know. Alright, sit tight! Let's go! Oh dear. Fix it up for one last time. Don't borrow that annoying human face from us. The bright yellow tuk-tuk drifts in a beautiful arc on the south, on the south road. The round sand kicked up in the air, covering up the curses of the passerby. Slow down! Slow it down! We're going too fast! Whoa! Is this thing really under control? Doubt it. Tuk Tuk roars along, the miracle pedals are flying wildly in the, in the wind. Not yet, best spot! Hold that back tight! Ah, ah, ah. Oh dear. Yeah, the expected response. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You must not be used to this. Here, use it. As Kanjira passes over the hem of her skirt, Matilda takes out a handkerchief from her pocket in silence. If you want yourself dirty, fine. You look very decent after all. And here it is. The shrine is apparently an old one, judging by the worn bricks. The smell of sticky peat spices in the air is, al is almost suffocating. What's the smell? Is it <coughs> smell 
under a full white mask and sandals, calming Palo Santo and cinnamon. <sighs> you feel your chakra open? If I was in that kind of a woman, I, the only thing I would feel is my sinus is flaring. But I can also smell hmm, a lot of mango. That smells good. Kanjira glances at the stone wall to measure its height and then nods. Okay. Jump over this wall and we're in. Jump over it? I thought there was at least a hidden side door. To see the closed cave, you must pay a price. <sighs> so this is your local connections. Um, <laughs> well, that means Tuk Tuk, my guest. No Tuk Tuk this village is faster than that. Uncle Sina is not so nice and lend me if I don't give him my lunch money. My route don't need entrance ticket. Shouldn't you give me credit? Even if she is busted, Kanjiro is not embarrassed at all. On the contrary, she looks a bit proud. She puts her hands together to form a temporary stepping stone. Now come! Although I think you don't like this rude behavior. <laughs> Ignoring the stepping stone, Matilda raises her arms and jumps up the wall deftly. Huh? Yeah. I was thoughtful and considerate enough not to wipe my nose on your skirt. Yet you repay my kindness with contempt. Huh. Climbing over a wall of this height is really a piece of cake. So, do you need a hand getting up here? Matilda looks down proudly from the top of the wall. <laughs> yeah, we tell this isn't exactly human. The shrine is shrouded in thick smoke and packed with pious believers, resembling a legged cloud with the smell of spices. The two small figures, figures sneak into the shadow in the corner while avoiding the believers in their way. I don't know what this skulking was for. You better not be lying. Are you eating? Hey, what's that in your hand? You want a bite? The prayers are so pious. So don't worry. The fruits are tasty. Mmm, like I expect. So sweet. Where did you... Did you take it from the offerings? Don't mind! Manka, come back! A little black snake peeps up her arm quietly. I didn't even notice the snake wasn't even on her arm. By the way, I hope he was not afraid of snakes. I'm a special kind. And I'm curious about what exactly you are referring to. Specially rude or specially annoying? Probably Why both. so angry? <laughs> Artemis, hope I don't scare you. Relax, I'm not like others. Are you serious? Can't you tell I'm also an excellent, one of the best, Artemis? Matilda jumps up and jerk out of excitement, but then she notices the crowds and has to crouch down again pretty quickly. So you were lying to me! <gasps> Spoke about all those good virtues you can see in me! Not my fault. You doesn't look like one. And you do. Kanjiro drops the mango core and scans Matilda in slight surprise. I thought all arcanists except me are like... Like what? Like the villagers. Those old mans yell when they see humans like annoying monkeys or growing chickens. They even drive humans away. Don't care they is here to help. Why you think only the train station is tidy and clean? Humans in other places is all drive away. I'm not like them because... Anyways, I never thought there is more arcanist like me. Kaiser speaks in a quiet voice. A confused look appears on her face. Hmm. If you ask me, I'd say you read too little and know too little. I suggest you follow my example and adopt the style of Ariel, Arcanist. Fine, 
time. Oh, Mampa say there is just a few people outside. So up your head, stay confident and walk out like we paid. Hmm. <gasps> Have you been listening or not? I don't think so. <laughs> This is the North Cave. Following Kantara, Matilda goes through the smoke and arrives at the entrance to the cave. Huh. Nice. Nobody around as usual. But I still suggest you be careful since... Mm, I understand the damage when digging. Just don't involve me if you must break something. Matilda looks up, not hearing a word of her mutter. So this is the head of Findre? The top of the cave looks like a black hole. No one knows where it will lead or what will it what it will devour. Dark and scary, but this is what must go through on the way to treasure. Just like you must say, open sesame, right? I really don't know what to make of this treasure you've been mumbling about. I hope you didn't get the wrong idea. Ah, I see what you mean here. Relax. I will zip my lips and tell no one. <laughs> she zips her mouth shut and nods sincerely. I'll just stay here then. Everything good luck. Ah? Huh? Anyway, despite all the strange things you've been talking about along the way, you have successfully taken me here as promised. I guess here is where we part. Thank you. After bidding her goodbye, Matilda turns around to walk toward the cave while browsing the documents in her hand. As soon as she is devoured by the bottomless darkness, soon she is devoured by the bottomless darkness. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, we tell this pop going run into some trouble. Footsteps echo inside the cave like a piece of poorly composed percussion music. Cette peinture murale semble être en rapport avec ce mythe. Là, sur ce document. What? There's. There's a huge mural carved on the wall, spreading to the end of her sight. She turns the pages of the notebook quite quickly. J'ai trouvé! Before the serpent struck in night sky, the stone house of Azura rose to the north of the head of Vindre. I was just thinking to myself that it looks like Asura. You see the depictions of Asura in like a lot of uh, popular media and fiction, like, a lot. I'm pretty sure there's a- Isn't there a character named Asura in, a, like, a fighting game or something? I think- I, I'm pretty sure there was. The master of the stone has acted with countless feet, with countless eyes, to trip, to pry, in bringing the blessed house of men to rest. Wow! Impressionnant! C'est peut-être l'origine d'une créature mystérieuse. Le coup du serpent, c'est-à-dire le meilleur moment pour s'entraîner sur l'énergie céleste. Et lorsque la comète traverse le ciel, long darkness reaches the man as the serpent's tail reveals itself. Some are sent down the great slopes and never return. For desire is the infallible devourer. Le désir. Hmm. Je devrais méditer avant de m'entraîner. Hmm. The circle of everything ends at the tip of the great tail. All. Oh, wow. Well. What was that? <laughs> the echo has disappeared. 
Behind her, there is nothing but boundless darkness. Est-ce que j'ai mal entendu? Non! Come into the light! Who is there? Her voice ripples out. It echoes and echoes on. It echoes and the echoes of the echoes reverberate between the walls of the cave. There is no response. Ce n'est pas normal! Est-ce que cette statue était dans cette position avant? While Matilda is still wandering, the statues in her sight start to move. Oh, oh I hate moving statues. The benevolent looking statues, which were sitting in Lotus Persistent, are now struggling in a twisted way to break free from the wall. C'est pas bon. Il est temps de se replier. That would be a good idea, yes. She turns around immediate, immediately and went towards the exit, yet the ground is pulling her back like a woolen carpet. Yeah, I figures it wouldn't be that easy. She can feel her chin hitting hard against the rock. One arm, two, three, and more of them are going out from both sides of the statues, each with a glossy eyeball embedded within. Following the slight noise, every eye turns to the girl lying on the ground. All right, time for battle. Oh wow, okay. Four minerals, two plant types. Oscar statue of hatred, Oscar statue of anger. Master statue in the stone cellar deep in the throes of a wild dance. A thousand hands and legs, each given form of a by affinity, shifting, shifting shape at will. Catastrophic loss one. When caster enters battle, it gains a viscerous boom with the caster's max HP times 30% HP only triggers one time after losing viscerous wound into his fragile state for two rounds. Damage taken reduction 30%, critical defense 30%. Rosal Spoon, Sealed, Critical Defense, plus 20%, Damage Taken, Reduction, 20%, Immune to Fragile Status. And, uh, Oscar Sanctuary's for Anger have the same ones. In this situation, definitely need some Star Elements, and at least one Beast Element. Fix, Solar Eclipse. Activates the Mediator's Realm that immediately gives all allies Moxie plus 3. When the realm, other realm is active, Moxie plus 1 and Ultimate Might plus 30 for each round. The realm lasts two, 2 rounds. Okay then. It says none recommended, but we're finding mineral types, so we need Star type in here. Again, Tooth Fairy, Charlie, and of course Matilda. And again, we're fighting some plant types too, so we need a beast type in this. I'll take out Charlie and put in Tenant. Or, no, put in Melania. Oh, we still need one more here. Hold on. Uh. I'll put in Charlie. D don't look at me! I'm not the one you saw on the wanted list! Beat all enemies in wave one. Hmm? I think I have to hearken the Sir Commandment. They seem to be whispering that the stars are all at my command. The Sir Commandment can be found in some stages. Follow the commandment to call upon stellar powers. Okay then. Defeat all enemies in wave one. That's pretty much the plan here. Plant A. No. I don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. That's one out. 
Two out. Here goes your seal. Stop. Obtained the Azure Commandment and summoned the stellar powers. You can now enter the Mediator's realm and enjoy its special effects. Phew, looks like this power won't last too long. No matter, at least it'll solve my immediate problem. Long press to view its effects. Activate the Mediator's realm. We already read this earlier. May as well. The show's on, Howard. Can be. Can be. Clearly. Time waits for no one, even for a great thing. I wouldn't even think to pick the targets for these ultimates first. Yeah, well. Pick up one. Your fate is doomed! Pick up two. I might pass. No worries. Plan A. That went smooth. Exactly. Excuse me, I had to sneeze for a minute. Christmas of the Sky is now active. Please proceed to view its details. Complete the event's main story to un mode to unlock the stellar powers. Complete the Azure Commandment in bouts and call upon the stellar powers. Whispers of the Sky rules. Meet the requirements to unlock stellar power. Stellar power can be used in battle. 1. Complete the main event story to get that which glitters. This can be used to hearken to Whispers of the Sky. Two buffs acquired will raise its impact on the mediator's realm. Okay. So I need to collect that which glitters to get the rest of this to get this stronger. I think that's what it's saying. Look, fate is woven from the threads of coincidence. Part 4, Intersecting Lines. Is that a cave in a shrine? Of course there's so many of them. What'd you expect, Matilda? Like overgrown grass, more and more statues are coming out of the walls, no matter how many Matildas destroys. Matilda lies against the sharp gravel on the ground. She covers her waist in gra gasps and pain. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. Blood is running out from between her fingers unstoppably, taking away her vitality like the water pump does. The statue in front of her raises the umbrella in its hand. No, no, Professor! Well, that's a problem. Her hands drenched in blood, she can no longer hold the orb. Get on your feet. Kala. Huh? So I have a sound going back and forth. I'm trying to adjust the mic a bit. Trying to make sure that the game isn't drowning out my voice while I'm speaking. The moment she hears the strange voice, Matilda regains the strength in her limbs. She can't help but bounce up like a puppet controlled by some invisible threads. Well done, 
little diviner. Ramaniyani Ariyani. My legs, they heal themselves all the way out the wounds. Close your eyes. Don't look at anything. The illusions will destroy your will. Wait. That... that was... Oh, so it's really fighting it. Mayura Abhiratani Silence and cold fall again, as if nothing ha has happened. Mutata looks down at her legs, slapping them to check to see if she is dreaming. However, they are smooth, nimble, and healthy. There are no signs of injury on her skin other than the light red marks from the slaps. Is une sorte de compétence arcanique hallucinante? You are the lady from the train station. She looks at the lady in confusion. Looks like part of our destinies are now tied together, kid. Kalabrana responds to her with a reassuring smile. What are you doing here? I don't think this place is open to tourists. I, uh... <gasps> oh, now what? Something is turning down the unperceptibly dark. They are coming again! Is it another illusion? Now I think this one's very much real. Hands, hands, and more hands. The familiar dark yellow statues are likely hatched creatures, slimy and ugly. They're trying hard to break the cell of darkness. No, they're not. Please, stay behind me. Calabron understands and sounds a bit confused. Yet to pelgo las lila fair. have an actual fight this time. Beauty is our commandment here. Attack enemies suffering from fragile status three times. It's like stellar powers here. And there's only one. How are we dealing with the spirit type in this? Ask for a statue king. An ask for a statue in the stone pit cellar, large and intimidating. Its hand plots out the sun and moon. Its war thunderous. Caster have lost three. And caster in the battle, caster enters battle, gains an extermination, gains a extermination boon. With the caster's max HP increased by thirty percent. Only triggers one time after losing it. Enters frazzle status for two rounds. So I pay my just what the other two have with flawless boon, except. Uh, it seems to be the same. Roger's boon. Oh, this one has flawless boon. That's the difference. <laughs> I think we don't need to bring in any intelligence type of spirits. So let me go what we got right now. Nothing unexpected. Fun out. I know how to do it. Just tell me what to do. Plan A. Relax. 
handy. Oh, it's a single target. We need some peaceful moments. Huh. Beep -boop, beep -boop, beep -boop. It's two out. A two, show, a two, show, And that's all. Easy. Are you all right? Hiding behind the rock, Talabrana carefully pushes away until the smoothly blonde hair is kind of wound. Not illusions this time. Are that the reason? Kumar ne ye kaise kiya? Ah, the pain. What is happening now? I was only here for. Sorry, but it's not the time for explaining. We're at the exit soon. Remember. Leave this village as soon as possible after you're out. Do not... <gasps> Before she finishes the words, Calabuana seems to... Oh, come on now! These rocks fall to the ground. The rock they hide be behind is now a pile of powder. Oh, crap. <sighs> cave sinks under the strikes of the statues. Uh. Oh, please, go to cave in at this point. Hey! You hear a strange voice. Watch your head! Kalabwana seems quite nervous. Her arms are holding the tilt even more tightly. A familiar figure leaps onto the statue's soldier and raises ah! his fist. Oh, it's him again! The left half of the statue's face flies across the cave. Huh. Harder than I thought. Dad hadn't told me those statues could move. Again! Then the statue breaks his pieces under his fist and falls to the ground. Huh. That's dangerous. Sorry. Though you have a very impressive appearance as a statue, your attitude and manner are problematic. Ha! Damn, dude. Calabuana grips until the sleeve gently, pulling her one step to the side. The next moment, the falling rocks graze her hair and smashed into the ground. <sighs> the cave goes quiet again, and hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> Jeez. The debris of the, style of the statue piles up in front of them. Huh? <sighs> Huge rock is cast aside. The man emerges from the ruins, patting the dust off his broad shoulders. Uh, hey, you guys all right? These things are freaky. So, do you know where they came from? My head almost got smashed when I reached the entrance. He walks a slow pace, but he keeps his tongue busy. I'm welcomed by these things as soon as I'm back. What a surprise, huh? Huh? Yeah, I don't get it Is he talking to us? Probably. The man walks over to Matilda. His eyebrows are drawn together in bewilderment. Hmm. Wait. But quickly, his face brightens up. Aren't you the little one from the train station? I helped get your stuff back. Remember me? The man quickly wipes his face, hoping that Matilda can see him more clearly. Huh? Oh. The tall figure takes her back to the. Take her, takes her back to the train station. It's you! The man bitten by the thief! Yeah, that's me! <laughs> that was one merciless bite. That's a hand, by the way. You good? Hope we didn't leave it. Hopefully you didn't break the skin. <laughs> he cracks a smile. Huh? 
What a happy coincidence. Well, maybe this is not the best place for a reunion, but the occasion is not for us to decide. Why were you even in the cave in the first place? Oh, I should introduce myself this time. The name is Shemaine. Sorry, I wasn't much of a helping hand earlier and let that kid get away. But this time I have made it up to you. Huh? Huh? Oh, um... I'm to cast a hesitant glance at the wounds. You have made it up, I guess. Sorry to interrupt you. Calabrana raises a hand and interrupts them. But I think this place is safe only for now. It'd be a wise choice to leave as soon as possible. Yeah, it's not telling when those things will start back up again. He speaks a bit faster. And I mean more than this cave. Actually, are you tourists? I'm hoping you can leave this village in a couple of days. Hmm? I know this sounds weird, but you need to trust me. She reaches inside the pocket of her coat and tries to take out a stack of files. Huh? That... Call him any better. Her <gasps> finger slips and the files slitter at the floor. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy, lady. Take your time. We're listening. Jermaine Hunker hunkers next to her, helping her pick up, pick up the files. Oh, here's your ID. Miss Kala Bona. Hold it. Thank you. Oh, it's Bona. I've been pronouncing it Bona the entire time. Kala Bona reaches for the card, but he doesn't lose in his hand. Hmm? Jermaine points at her wrist with a socked look on his face. She follows his gaze and looks down. A pair of tortoiseshell spectacles hangs on her belt. One temple broken. Nahi, my galat nahi ho sakta. How come you have Kumar stuff on your belt? <gasps> that conscious thought tightens her grasp on her ID. <gasps> you, you, you know Kumar? Hmm? Kumar? Who's that? That's what I'm wondering. Seems like you two have some history with them. We tell the returns to their side with the files he found nearby. And what's with the shock? I thought we'd need to leave now. She mumbles in confusion and picks up the last piece of paper on the ground. Bon, c'est le dernier. Laisse-moi voir. Page 1, page 2. As he speaks, the files are flattened, moved around, and rearranged. Page 5. Hmm? She stops at a page with familiar con content. What? It is a data analysis chart. Some notes hastily written in graceful handwriting are left next to it. Some words are even highlighted with question marks. Ces papiers parlent d'énergie céleste et exactement de celle sur laquelle je veux m'exercer. C'est ça. L'analyse sur l'énergie arcanique est très similaire à celle des documents que j'ai trouvés. Mais pas complètement. Celui-ci semble. The black curves in the chart make her stomach sink. Her gaze slides down the page and fixes on a word with a question mark next to it. <gasps> Manus Vindicte? The Manus Vindicte? What? What did they have to do with this? Now things definitely got more interesting. Every person has a beginning and end. Oh, that's on popped up. Noises from the stone cellar. There's no end to the trouble here. Leave while you can. A forest trouble comes knocking with martial batons in hand. And again with the statues, because there's more of the anger statues than the agent ones this time. Oh, we're a fixed party here. With Mr. Apple, Matilda, and what was his name? Salman again, right? Oh, it's a beast type. Let's see, I guess he'll be one doing the damage to the plant types. Let's see what you got here. One target attack deals two hundred percent reality damage. Mass debuff, damage taken plus 10%, and reality defense and mental defense minus negative negative 15% for all enemies. 
bouncing rounds. Okay. Great position. Sure, come on. Everyone has a Be careful, young man. Oh, good for you. A brave decision. But keep those debuffs going. Just healing again. Oh, I can't agree more. Everyone has their own Ha! Stay straight. There we go. Now we're doing some damage. Thanks. Seal down, boy. Be careful, young man. Affirmative. I drink your man. Deals 20% reality damage to all enemies. It's crit enjoys crit rate plus 20%. It says critical damage is converted to crit because critical rate is converted to crit damage and deals an additional 250% reality damage to the main target. Damn. Okay then. All right. Deep breath in. A brave decision. Oh. I can't agree more. Give me a hand, friends. I can't do this alone. Nice. Hold on to that. <laughs> I like this guy. Great too. That's your command. Dandy buff. Affirmative. Everyone has their own damage. Extraction of the rain. Be careful, young man. Thank you, things so far. Alright, deep breath in. Don't worry. Weightlessness only lasts a second. Give me a hand, friends. I can't do this alone. The star falls towards the sun as the apple drops to the ground. See what Your fate is doomed. Which matters more, knowledge or strength? Good question, Mr. Apple. It's a good thing we didn't exacerbate the issue. Indeed. Indeed. Mm hmm. Again, see, my voice sounds a bit fluctuated. Again, I'm trying to adjust the mic a bit. So it's not too loud, but also not too quiet. I'm pressing the issue I'm still trying to fix now today. And let's see. Can do. Nope, can't do any upgrades like yet. Every person has a beginning and an end. Part 5 The Air. What could the management dictate have to do with this situation? Oh, uh, great, you're still here. Kanzura <laughs> wipes her mouth with the hem of her skirt and steps into the cave. Samhalke Shup Chap. Oh, वो ठीक है, वो गहराई में क्या कर रही है, वो दोनों कौन है? 
probably be climbs on a rock nearby. मुझे नहीं पता था कि यहाँ इतनी सारी चट्टाने हैं। ठीक है, चढ़ते रहो। लगभग पहुँच गए। Sticks are dusty feet in the air, struggling to climb onto a raised edge of the rock. Huh? Well, that doesn't sound good. Something grabs her ankle. She frowns and looks down. It's a severed hand. Yeah, that's not terrifying at all. Impulsively, Kanjiro kicks her leg. The hand, already covered with many cracks, is thrown into the air and smashes into pieces on the ground. Is that a hand? Whose hand is it? What did he? Where does it come from? Her heart beats violently. Or you can hear it. She holds her breath and gathers enough courage to look closer. Ye patthar hai kya? She tentatively touches a lump in with her fingertip. Nothing happens. Feeling relieved, she starts putting them back together. Huh? ऐसा लगता है कि ये वहाँ मौजूद बदसूरत मूर्तियों में से एक है. अरे, ये क्या हिल सकती है? But the looks of it, yes, they can move. Wow! Ye bilkul vesa hi hai! Vesa hi! There is a twinkle of excitement in her eyes. Kitab ki kahani ki tarha! Ha! Ye sahi hai! Wo kazane ki rak wali karne wale golem! Wo sach hai! Men chanti thi! Or, wo ajkar jo mehel ko khata hai! Wo ratan jo sumundar ko torta hai! We're not gonna go into a dragon, are we? Miss Sharja is talking about the truth. It's not a story. There's no doubt that it's her friend. It's her friend. They're going to find out the truth. They've killed the people. They've killed the people. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. Oh, no. 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 Oh, no.
I decided to contact her. But when I finally found the lab she had worked in, the staff told me she had already left. She looks at Matilda. Our common friend told me she had seen Kumar by coincidence. She saw her leave with the manis. <gasps> with the manis? Palabana spreads her fingers and shows Matilda a dusty stone on her left palm. Despite the misshapen outline, the stone seems to be a, a little idle. And I found this from what she left behind. I compared it to the hole in the wall. It does come from this cave, and it has something to do with the Arcanum-related materials on that celestial body. But Kumar never makes mistakes. This one is more like a clue she left to me. Hmm. I don't understand her. I don't get it either, to be honest. Judging from the situation, apparently I'm not the only one invited. She raises her right hand, sewing them to wrinkled envelope. There is a blue postmark on the envelope and an elephant pattern on the right, on the bright yellow seal. Inside the envelope, there is a worn piece of paper with nothing on it. Oh, this is getting even stranger than seeing those moving statues. Like I said, I am, well, to be more precise, I almost am the last living member of my family. The main points at the majestic ele elephant on the seal. This stamp was supposed to come from a special seal that belongs to the heir of the family. Unfortunately, it was passed down to me, and I lost it to a bear many years ago. How'd you... what? I checked the postmark on the envelope and found the letter came from this remote cave where even rock pigeons don't bother to pay a visit. Since it is highly unlikely that the bear with my seal in its belly would take transport all the way to a cave to send me a letter. I decided to come here myself and find out what this was all about. But there's one thing I found weird in what you said. Jermaine hesitates about what he's going to say. As far as I know, my sister is even worse than unqualified. If taken as an arcanist, she's almost like a human. It's nearly impossible for her to use the most basic arcane skills. And this? He opens both of his palms and gestures to the direction of the book and statues on the ground. This is not something a random person from our world can do. Is she really able to control these things? No, she can't. But she has a solution. A solution even I am not aware of. Theoretically, our skills can only create illusions and nothing more. But if the man is really offered to help her, even though I don't want to think this way, she may be able to do that. In which case, the man might be using her or trying to turn her to their side. In which, though, both ideas are bad in, in retrospect. Oh, I forgot the manis part. How do you even get the manis part? Those guys are literally the evil guys in all of this. All right. All I know is, if this letter is really an invitation from her, I guess this won't be a delightful trip for me. <laughs> I've heard about that incident in her family, and I don't think her ultimate purpose is just to gather us here. She turns around and looks at Matilda with a serious but sincere expression. Thank goodness I met you here, young lady. Can't believe I ran into a Foundation investigator. <laughs> Don't mind the title. Every member of the Foundation is obliged to contribute to the cause of peace, let alone an act. That's great. Master is what the on here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, how fortunate the Foundation has been to have such an excellent subordinate like I am. Is that why Samus is actually on leave right now? I hereby apply for assistance to the Foundation as an astronomy professor and an arcanist. Yes, Miss Kalavauna? Rather than find Kumar and the Manis, we have something more important to do now. Something more important? We need the Foundation's assistance to evacuate the villagers and tourists in Morpunk Village as soon as possible, because that near-Earth astro... No, no. 
it's not an asteroid. That celestial body we study, not able to be observed by human technology, is approaching this village at a dangerous speed. It reaches level 5 on Torino scale and 0.01 on Palermo scale. What? In brief, uh -oh. the meteor shower that is occurring during Deepa festival will become a disaster of meteoroids. I tried to ask organizations in the surrounding areas for help, but this village is out of Chandigarh's jurisdiction. So the local authorities won't help. In which case, yeah, the foundation is the only ones that can help her, help her at this point. Unfortunately, the only member of the foundation that's here is currently on leave, so she can't really do anything. Besides, the villagers refuse to accept help from any social organizations related to humans. In other words, they'll only accept help from other arcanists. Yikes. The good news is, there are still days before the Deepa festival starts. We still have time to evacuate the people. Meanwhile, I will do whatever I can to find Kumar and stop her, no matter what her next step is. If the Foundation offers its assistance, I will provide any support when needed. So this... This is her real? Yes. In this case, what happened in the caves was probably nothing more than an experiment. If this is just an experiment, the real deal is going to be absolute hell. I'm not sure why she's doing this, but I won't allow such an abuse of our hard work. It is our work after all. That's why I must stop the star from falling. And she heard all of um, that. Did you guys hear anything? Nope. Didn't hear a thing. The small figure vaults deftly over the wall, running down the road in, in the opposite direction. Hmm. This is a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Oh boy. There is no one here. And now... The stars are falling. The stars are falling. Everyone won't be alive. I have to go And She seems to know the place well. She takes a few turns, climbs over another wall, and lands in a deserted yard. Gonjira? Um, Miss Sharja, why, how you find this place? Of course I can find it. It's your secret base, right? Yeah, boy. She reaches out and drags a nervous looking girl to herself. A secret base in others' house without the owner's permission? Well, well, well. Oh, boy. No, 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 Miss Sharja. It's not time to judge me. Something huge just happened. Sorry, sweet lady. Your tricks never worked on me. Once is not a trick. Sharja catches the ear of the troublemaker. Oh, that's painful. Got a jar of steel. Broke into an old house. Let me check your wallet. I knew it. Whose wallet is this? Did you forget what I taught you? Y yes, I do all these. I'm sorry, Miss Sharja, but let me down. It's too late if we don't leave now. The village is going to destroy it. Uh, what are you babbling about this time? It's real, not like I even run all the way back from the shrine like idiot and leave Tuk Tuk I borrow from Uncle Sarha there. Ah, uh, you went to the shrine and ate the offerings again? Young miss? I'm really sorry, but you must believe me this time. Where are the others? Where they go? We must tell them now they must take train and leave this place today. <sighs> they went to the street for business. What on earth is happening? L listen to me! You may be smart to actually listen to this girl. 
So like the troublemaker, being the troublemaker that he is, he's trying to keep everyone alive here. I'm, I'm catched by a stone hand in the shrine's cave, and, and I see the treasure hunters. I hear what they say. They say a big, big stone called M Meteorite will fall and smash the village when Deepa festival starts. Honey, I told you, they're just fairy tales. Not this one. <laughs> this ain't no fairy tale this time. No, it's true. Those statues actually move. Said the old house, Kanjira is so busy persuading Serja that he just has not noticed the opposing footsteps from outside the door. Broken, but that's okay. I know the place well. Though Kumar hasn't come here very often in the past year, it's a good place to start with. Hello. You are. The two groups look at each other in silence through this through the door. As the silence goes on, Matilda notices the wallet in Serge's hand. Hey! That's in your hand! Is that my wallet? Of course, that's the first thing you notice. <laughs> oh lord, to be continued. Of course, that's the first thing you notice in the situation, Matilda. <sighs> The past has a familiar weight that rests on the soldiers of uh, soldiers. It's the soldiers or soldiers. I'm gonna say soldiers. Rest on the soldiers, soldiers of its heirs. Good Lord Almighty, I cannot pronounce certain words correctly. Damn autism. Part six: The Sacred Fig. This is Kumar's house, probably. Guided by this many, these many people, the old house seems even savvier. The five of them sit around a, a piece of furniture that can barely be used as a table. The awkwardness surrounds them like a naughty bird. Thank you so much for your understanding, Mr. Sharma and Miss Buanish. Ah, please, madam. You have my admiration for voluntarily taking care of these kids. Besides, Technically speaking, this room doesn't belong to me anymore, but to my sister Kumar. I wish I could leave the house to you for future use. He probably help out with the whole kid situation. He gestures for Kalabana. But you heard what the lady said. I don't even know if the house will survive the meteor. <laughs> this is probably not the best time for a sense of humor. Everyone in the room falls into silence. The coming crisis makes them heavy in mind. They sit on the dusted ground. Samane magically takes, a, takes out several ceramic cups from his luggage. This is the latest batch of Darjeeling tea. Some locals gave it to me when I went across their village. Ah, careful. It's hot. And it's tea. It's best served hot. He touches the cup to feel its temperature and passes, it, passes out the cups one by one. Until this snatches Kanjira's cup angrily. <gasps> you two are in on it together? You've been lying to me all this time? Hey, quiet before Mr. Zhang. You don't lose anything, my lady. Please forgive me, will you? Now pass me cookies. I need to fill my belly and get to work. Did he not eat enough earlier? My apologies, Miss Sharjah. I know this is totally out of the blue. Kalabana takes out her files again. She has carefully prepared herself to persuade the others. And the details are yet to be verified. But a valuable time is running out. The last thing we should do is keep on waiting. Um... Gay soups of the difficult and obscure data and words. Kalabona. Her face suddenly brightens up. My, I think I know this name. I've read the paper co-authored by you and, uh, Professor Himani. Huh? You've read my paper? Uh, yeah. I'm studying in a public university in Chandigarh. I get to learn a lot of new stuff there. I had a whim to study astronomy before, and I remember reading it in a periodical. Oh, so like someone has a fan. See, gestulates at the papers. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Yes, I'm sure. It's the same name. This part, and this part. 
I've read them in your paper, but um, this one on the side, I don't know anything like it. It's okay. That one involves the knowledge of Arcanum. Calabana, to relax us a bit. Anyway, this is good news. No, great news. So what are you doing in Morpunk? Oh, I take care of the kids here in my spare time. Most of them are humans, but there are Arcanists too. I see. So, what are you going to do now? The question contains both confusion and worry. I know the top priority is to evacuate the villagers. But we don't have much time, since the Deepa festival will start in less than four days. Besides, things are complicated in this village. I mean, if you got four days, I feel like... Well, no, even then. It's just telling how many people are in this village. Trying to evacuate an unknown number of amount of people from a whole village before a festival starts in just less than four days. That's, that, that will be difficult. I don't know what I'm trying to say. She frowns at the dot. This could be tricky. Most of them, including me, had moved to Chandigarh. And the rest of them... <sighs> to try and get them to leave, even with a crisis impending, would be very difficult. I've heard about that on the way here. Most villagers are reluctant to leave no matter what I say. I tried by starting with those young arcanists, but shame it didn't work at all. The silver lining is, we have the helping hand of Ms. Boanish. She will try to make contact with the Foundation as soon as possible. But we still need to evacuate every villager we can. The question is, will she be even be able to right now? We know almost nothing about Kumar's plan now. Not to mention her whereabouts or purpose. Other man saying, is he doing this voluntarily, voluntarily, or is the man is making her do this? That's the question. Because the man is making her do this, that's a whole different situation. The ice has been broken between them, but their moods have not yet lightened. Relax. For now, we have two solutions to the problem. Again, I, that arm is really cool. I can't get over how I can't get over the intricate design in it. It looks rustic yet very well advanced. And it feels like it's got some good weight to it. Like we saw how hard he punched that statue earlier. Semaine raises both of his hands, palms up. First, let's find my clever evil sister so that our astronomer friend can figure out a way to stop the meteor. Or, spread the word and tell everyone to take the earliest train and leave the impact area. It's hard to be optimistic given the situation, but at least there is something we can do to reduce the damage. But, if we continue to sit around waiting, the situation will only worsen. Come, let's think. Like, evacuation seems like the best solution, but at the same time, trying to stop the impending disaster altogether would be much more favorable. The then guess trying to do either one would be difficult. Bushes and weeds grow throughout the yard, but Tilda finds a relatively open area, taking out a silver, silver device from her pocket with great caution. Sherja and Kanjira, the two people who are most familiar with the village, have set, to evacuate, set out to evacuate the villagers. Inside the house, Semaine and Kalabana are, tuning, are turning the room into a cloud of dust find any possible clues about Kumar. The only quiet place left for Matilda to perform her duty as foundation investigator is this long deserted yard. Genial! Il est finalement utile! What is that? SPF1 portable contact device activated. Welcome. Oh, it's like a communicator. Okay. Arcane skill verification activated. Please make sure you are not equipped with any wands. Read out the random incantation displayed on the screen clearly. Make sure your tone remains stable. <laughs> Fuego! Burn! Verification success. Registered user, Matilda Buanish. Access level, D. No abnormal arcane skill fluctuation detected in the area so far. 
Level D access only supports quick report. Hmm? That's all? Accès à suffisant. La description dit. Oh. Donc seul un enquêteur peut demander un renfort via ce système. Great. Alors, à quoi ça sert de le transporter partout Je pensais que ce serait utile pour les urgences. Well, that's a problem. Non, cela signifie-t-il que je vais rater l'occasion d'étudier l'énergie céleste en plus de gâcher ma chance de capturer le Manus So they can't get foundation help in this situation. La réception est terrible ici. Comment est-ce que je vais entrer en contact avec la fondation Oh, that doesn't sound like any progress with her. And what I have here is only books. Books and books and books. Nothing else. Maybe look inside Calf the box. Feeding and management. Is my sister really an astronomer? Was I mistaken about anything? Hey, Matilda, if you like, there should be the last two pieces of Plera J on the table. Remember to have them with tea, or it's going to hurt your throat and ruin your beautiful voice. Kanjira was ecstatic about those cookies. She even took three pieces with her when she left. I hope that kind human girl will get to the train station safely with those kids. Now, let's, hope so. let's take a look at you. What are you doing? Is this the stone Kumar left to you? Talabana carefully parts the stone. An idol, idol emerges from it. Vishnu? Oh, it is Vishnu, isn't it? Brahma creates. Shiva exterminates. And Vishnu safeguards the balance of the world, lying on the ocean of stars. We're just bringing, uh, you're just bringing in all, almost every um, historical figure of Buddhism, aren't we? Wait, is, it, is Vishnu part of Buddhism? God damn, I'm trying to remember. Oof. Like, when you played games like Simigami Tensei and Persona, like, characters and figures from these different types of religions and fates can get really jumbled up in your head. Like, you mistake one for being part of another and all that. According to the materials, well, maybe I should explain it with mythologies for non-researchers. They mentioned three idols, but Vishnu's is the only one left. So she must have taken the other two. Perhaps it's proof that Kumar abandoned the path of maintaining the balance in the first place. That mural there. She said the mythology on it has been passed down in her family. <sighs> That's true. I've recited that story at least 20 times. But the part on the mural, to be honest, it feels so out of place to me. It was more like foisted into those well-known myths. Like, um, a pair of ox horns on a horse's head. The comparison brings a smile to Kalapana's face, but she shakes her head. An unusual metaphor. But actually, it plays a significant part in connecting all the mythologies we know. These mythologies are the primary material of our research. We've been trying to prove human science with basic arcanum theory. In fact, there is a connection between them, and they can support each other. She sighs. If arcanists and humans could get along, I suppose the world would have developed faster than it does now. Sensing Semaine's confusion, Calabana pauses to recognize her language. It's not easy to explain it through, but in short, there is another universe in the shape of an egg affecting reality. We call it the Meditator's Realm. Just like our daily dreams, you can enter it once you fall asleep. But that's not how we do it. We connect part of our gnosis with the realm through a special kind of meditation. It's not as easy as it sounds. One needs to either master the meditation skills like we do, or use a special medium as an anchor. You said that sounded easy. It's all kinds of comp all kinds of complicated. 
She raises her hand, showing the Vishnu idol to them. Some mythologies are the original translation of the realm, an existence that cannot be observed through the methods in this world can be located as long as it is included in mythology. That's how we located that star. Sadly, if we can't prove its existence with data recorded by human technology, our discovery is useless. I'm surprised. For all this time, she has never given up on studying the old Arcanum tale of our family. You can even say she's fanatic about it. It's just... Calabana frowns. Indeed, we can do a lot of supernatural things in the realm. If your mind is calm or your anger is strong enough, you can even do whatever you want. But it's limp. Remember I said it's like our daily hands. dreams? Press, keep Just think of it as a controllable power. one. Everything in the realm is created based on reality. In other words, it's nothing but a mirror. And the images in a mirror can never affect reality. Hmm. It's impossible to bring anything into the realm. Not to mention taking anything out. But the statues in the cave actually exist in this world. They are tangible. That means she's gone much further than I do. She mastered a method I'm not aware of. What bewilders me is her arcane skill. How did she do that if not for the Manus' help? Oh, come on. She also knows that cave a lot better than I do, right? Hmm. Saman so goes to the book pile on the other side of the room and casually opens the underground survival guide on top. We never hung out much. How long did she stay in the village on her last visit? A month maybe? Or two weeks? I'm not sure. I even crushed her glasses by accidentally sitting on them. Those are the same glasses you have on your belt. At that time, I thought she was a distant relative I don't know of. After all, it's rare to meet someone so clever and open-minded in this village. I even lent this room to her. This was my secret basement, you know. But only after we parted did my father tell me that she's my sister. The daughter they sent away for lack of arcanum talent. I do remember those days roughly. Back then, I couldn't find her in the institution. I was all alone for a long time. What happened to her? has inevitably affected me. I grew more and more rebellious against the family rules. It's like a story full of cliches. Giving up the training, refusing to listen to my father, skipping all the practice I could possibly avoid. I didn't want to be the blockhead hedged by the so-called family heritage. Mm. Of course, at the end of the story, I paid my price for breaking away. Which resulted in the prosthetic, I'm guessing. He raises the rough prosthesis and stops turning the pages. But I think for her, it is even harder to break free. He gently takes out a photo from the book. I guess her plan is to invite me over to this dump full of bad memories and swoosh, boom, smash all the annoyances with a star. <laughs> Hmm, that's a solemn ending. Pity the ones she hates are all gone now. Calabana takes the photo from him. But how come you're invited too? Did you upset her as well? Hmm, that's a good point. Hatred could be the most likely reason. Actually, we didn't get along well after we left the university. Calabana touches the girl in the photo with her fingertip. Ever since our identities as arcanists were exposed, we couldn't stay in the institution anymore. That's also... I always thought that... Damn it all! 
on the way to proving myself, ourselves. We were each other's only friend and best partner. How could I finish my study in campus full of humans without her? The small idol in her palm is a bit cool to the touch. But then my mind was changed. Her voice lowers. I wouldn't have connected Kumar with the man as Vindicte if Hermione's words were all I heard. But I know that was not the first time they made contact. You mean... Yes. I don't know the reason, but the Manus has contacted her long ago. She gave them the cold shoulder at the time. But I knew something inside her had changed. Soon after that, she left me, taking all the materials with her. I know the only thing I can do to meet her again is keep walking on the way to study that celestial body. That will lead me to her one day. As I said, we could frequently feel the existence of each other from the changes of the celestial body. But she could always find more information than I do, because the traces left by Arcanum are more obvious than those left by science. This connection between us conveyed my belief to her that one day we would meet again as colleagues. I just didn't expect that this would be the final outcome of my observation. Mm. Or that we would end up on the opposite sides. Hmm. Can there be any lamer stories to tell than these two? <laughs> you can say. For now, we can't find more clues in our house. Maybe we should go to the shrine again? How much do you remember the myth of your family? As I just said, that was the primary material of our study. It was like Matilda. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Running and jumping around with hot tea. I sure know the fun within. But at my age, with the benefit of hindsight, I have to tell you to be careful. You might get burned by the tea. No, no, it's the spice. The spice in the tea. What about it? More spice to it? Hmm. I do have a dozen kinds of different spices with me. Looks like you are very used to them in tea. Exactly! Tea spices! Let's hit the pants yourself on the chest proudly. <laughs> now it's time for Matilda to show you her best shot! Oh lord, what did you do? <laughs> oh lord. Tio, cumin! Oh, you also have clove blossom here. Fantastic. Calabana picks up a transparent blue crystal to look at it. The crystal divination. I've spent too much time in the human world to remember the convenience of Arcanum. Clearly. If I can foresee any sign about Kumar, our problem will be ended. With the help of the great Matilda, of course. Okay, take a deep breath, give me your hands, rest them on top of mine. Yes, like that. Now, think of Kumar in your head. Glasses. Hmm? Uh, uh, odd. Train station. <gasps> what? What is this? Is that the train station? Instead of sewing the sign as usual, the fog in the orb glows unexpectedly. It surges and gathers into a massive black slump. Oh, shit. <gasps> the mask of the man is Vindicta. Say, uh... Oh, no. 
Until they snapped open her eyes. The manners already reached Moor Park? Have they been here the whole time? Oh, I bet they were there the whole time already. Oh, thanks this got from bad to worse. Unfortunately, I just bought a rare and strong bike on. I heard it only came out. Unfortunately, that's all going. That's all the time we have for tonight. Ooh, things are getting messy. But I love it. I'm loving this game more and more. I just bought a rare and strong bike on. I heard it only came out. And of course, there's always there's always this one. It's always this gifts so that we get rewards using uh, currency we get from events and everything. And I'll try to work on getting all that because I want that side cube right there. The carrot of the heart. Getting the event side cubes is always good. They're real powerful. Especially getting these unit logs for pulls. But that's going to do it for tonight. Ugh. When was the last time we had to deal with anything involving the management dig day? This is going to get real interesting real quick. But I will catch you all Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday with more with Versus 1999 because I want to keep, keep going with this. I want to keep going with this. And I'll have to schedule for this week's operation up in the morning as always. Until next time, stay safe and be well, Cybers. Thank <laughs> you.